sometimes tasks in our project need to occur on specific dates or have restrictions. And constraints are one way to specify when a task starts and finishes. And it's worth noting that every task has a date constraint. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's switch into a different view so you understand what I'm talking about. Now, currently I have task form open at the bottom, but we're going to jump up to the view tab and over in split view, we're going to click the drop down and go straight into more views because what I want to bring up here is the task details form. Let's click on apply and I can now see that showing in the pane at the bottom. Now this is going to show me what constraints are applied to any particular task I have selected in the task entry table. So let's just pick a random task here, task number six. We can see a lot of information about this task, but we can see that there is a constraint on this task. Now I haven't set any constraints manually myself on any tasks that we've added into this schedule. I've just typed them in. We've done a couple of other things, but we haven't specified specifically constraints for any of the tasks, but there is a default constraint that's applied to all tasks. And you can see here that that constraint is that the task starts as soon as possible. And that's kind of really what you want when project is trying to work out your durations and your timings. It works off of the principle that you really want this project to be finished as soon as it's possible. And that is why we have that constraint type applied to every single task. Now, of course, if we click the drop down here, we have other constraint types that we can use. So things like as late as possible, finish no earlier than, finish no later than, must finish on, must start on, so on and so forth. And there might be scenarios where you need to add one of these constraints depending on what's going on in your project. So let's take a look at a quick example. Now, if we take a look at this task, task number 58, I can see that this is due to start on September the 12th, 2023. And maybe I know that at the end of September every single year, there is a sale on flights. So I don't want anybody to start booking flights for the trainers until those flights go on sale because we're going to save the company quite a bit of money. So what I can do here is I can change the constraint from start as soon as possible to start no earlier than and then I can select a date. So I'm going to go across to September 2023 and I don't want anyone to start booking flights until the last week of September. So let's change that to the 25th and you can see automatically the schedule updates and everything below that relies on this particular task has also updated, hence why we have those blue cells. Now I'm going to scroll to task by using the icon on the quick access toolbar so I can see what we have going on here. Now notice something else about this task. Now that we've added that constraint, you can see that in the information column on the left hand side, we now have this little calendar icon. And if I hover my mouse over it, I get a little screen tip pop up that says this task has a start no earlier than constraint on September the 25th, 2023. So whenever you see that calendar in that column, it means that there's a constraint applied to that particular task. Now I'm going to leave it to you to explore some of these other constraint types. I think most of them are pretty self-explanatory. Now, a lot of these are what we would consider to be flexible constraint types but some of them are a little bit more fixed. So for example, must start on. For example, if I select task number 47, book venue, maybe that's a very fixed item and it must start on a specific date in order for anything that comes after it to flow correctly through the project. So maybe we have to book a venue on August the 25th. So I could select a constraint in here to make that more fixed in the schedule. So I'm going to select it. It is a milestone task. We can still apply constraints to milestones, but I'm going to change the constraint to must start on and then I can choose the date. So it's going to be August the 25th. So let's jump across to August and select the 25th. Click on OK. And once again, we get that little calendar icon which says that this task has a must start on constraint and then we have the date. So some of these are a little bit more flexible. Some of them are very fixed, but something that's worth bearing in mind is that you want to really limit the number of date constraints that you have in your project. 
And the reason why you want to limit it is because it reduces projects ability to schedule things in the best way. If we're constantly adding constraints into the project, must start on this date, can't start before that date, project is going to find it harder to create a project plan that flows nicely through. Now, obviously, in some circumstances, you're going to need to add constraints. But all I'm saying is be mindful of how many you have in your project and try and limit them the best that you can. Another thing that's worth noting about task constraints is that you don't necessarily have to apply these from the task details form. So if you don't have this details pane open, and your project looks something like this, what you can do is select your task and then on the task ribbon, all the way over in the properties group, we have an information button. And that's going to pull up loads of information about the task that you've selected. So in this case, I've selected a summary task. Now, if we jump across to the advanced tab, we can also set our constraint type in here. So this one currently is as soon as possible. But if we click the drop down, we have some other options and we can choose a constraint date. Now notice here that when I click the drop down, I only have three options to choose from. Now that's because I'm clicked on a summary task. If I just click on a regular work task, go up to information and to the advanced tab, when I click the drop down, I now have all of those constraint types. So if you see a shorter list in here, it's going to be because you're clicked on a summary task as opposed to a work task. And this information box is a really good place to come because this is where you're going to find lots and lots of information about the tasks that you currently have selected in the schedule. And of course, you can modify task information from here as well, as well as from the task form details pane. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.